Hey guys, so I wanted to talk about Pixel Bush's IP leak video um, where it tries to present this theory kind of as a fact. It's kind of really not because the explanation it gives, that method is typically not used with game servers and it's a little far-fetched to say the least. So uh, I feel like I really need to correct this stuff so that way we actually have accurate information out there and that way people actually know that there is still a potential IP leak, right? So if I were to sum up this post right here, it's basically that actually meme guy, Reddit dude, um, because while technically he's correct, again, it's not something that you typically see set up with game servers and it's typically not needed because there's a variety of factors that come into play when you implement them, right? Okay, here's the uh, too long, didn't watch version of this, of the explanation. So uh, basically if there was just one proxy server for um, the DVD server and everybody else had to connect to it, right? Um, the way that proxy servers work is that there is just one address and this is the server's address and the server just sees this address and basically how the prox how the server would know to send what packets to who is by the different port um, and everybody would have a different port so the problem with this is that first off I will need to know this address right here to bomb this proxy server secondly I will need to find out which port I need to bomb and who it belongs to so I can target that specific person, the DDoS. And third, if I was to do that, I feel like the proxy server would be the one that goes down and everybody else would be able to feel it and maybe disconnect um, if this was the way that proxy servers were working, right? Um, the only other way that I was thinking of that would work is if everybody else had their own proxy server, correct? and those proxy servers connected to the DVD server instead, then in this case, um, if I compromise the server, then I can get the proxy server's address. Uh, the port wouldn't matter. Um, then I would just need to figure out whose, IP, whose proxy address would forward to whose, whose client, right? Um, so the problem with this is that obviously I'd still need an IP so I can DDoS it. Secondly, um, they would need to set up proxies every time uh, a match starts um, and proxies aren't necessarily cheap or free uh, so that would be additional server costs and additionally you would need public facing IP addresses so we can reach these uh, proxies and in this case um, that I can DDoS that way and if they are not on public IP addresses then I can't reach these proxy servers anyway um, even if I compromise the game server because the game server is not going to have enough traffic to bring down a connection. So I don't think this is why I don't think this proxy server would work this way either. If you want explanations for this, then please go ahead and watch the rest of the video. Post edit, I want to add that you need an IP address to be able to DDoS somebody. That's bottom line. You need the IP. It doesn't matter if the IP, the IP leaked is the proxy server or if it's the client's IP. You need an IP to, to DDoS. It doesn't matter what this post say. You need it. That's how computers communicate. So that's basically the summary you need if you don't want to watch further. But the rest of this video is just going to be an explanation of stuff in a very simple way and uh, explanations as to why these things would not work okay so we're going to use their example of how proxy servers are right like what is a proxy server so if you don't know what a po box is it's basically like a mailbox that you use so that people or entities can send mail, uh, mail to you and they don't know your actual address right so if i have uh, a computer right here right and I'll put C for computer and I have a server right here when I'm talking to the server right they know my address because they have to because that's the way the internet works you need IPs to be able to communicate which again they stay they say in the video <laughs> that you technically don't need IPs to DDoS but you do you absolutely do and I'll explain this later but you do so what a P what the, the proxy server does, a PO box is if you want to send something to somebody, right? But you don't want them to know your address for whatever reason, then you get a proxy 
or PO box in this case, right? And then I would send stuff to the to the PO box, who would then send stuff to the server or the server's mailbox, right? And all the mail, all the server sees is the PO box's mailbox. So I'm just gonna send stuff to the PO box. Once the PO box gets uh, the mail from the server, the server uh, mailbox, then it knows to send it to you because that's exactly what you're trying to do. So the server will never ever know your address. It, that's basically what a proxy is, right? You don't use proxy servers and game servers because you introduce lag, additional additional latency and cost to your to your game, right? And we already know how DBD kind of is. So what you need to know basically about IPs and ports is that everybody has an IP and they communicate with a port. Um, so basically you would see it as 2.168.1.1 and then you have the colon and then you have like your port number, right? That's typically how you communicate stuff. And everybody here is going to have a different address and a different port that they communicate to the server with, right? And that's how you know, well, that's how the proxy would know um, who to send what to, right? And the way that UDP works, which is what game servers use, is they know that they know this port number that they have to send stuff to and then they they also stamp it with their port number that they're talking to you to right let's start with the first method let's say that this is the game server right and let's say that behavior added a proxy server so it, it protects your guys's ips correct so let's pretend that this is the a dbd game right and somebody already disconnected a survivor right so let's say that this is the killer and then these guys are the survivors. So again, the server does not see any of your guys' IP addresses. It would see only the proxy address. So let's say that this is 0.5 and it's talking to the server on port like 69, okay? And let's say that the server's address is 0.1, right? And its port is like 67, okay? So if I was to DDoS somebody, right, I would not be able to find out their addresses unless I knew that or I had access to this proxy server and then I could query connections, correct? So and if I was on this server, then the only IP I see is 0.5, correct? Now, the question comes in is, First off, how am I gonna DDoS somebody in particular? And secondly, how do I know who, how, how can I reach that person if I ever are to find them out, correct? So let me explain what a DDoS is first. A DDoS stands for a distributed denial of service attack. Denial of service being denial of you being able to use your internet, right? That's the service. And distributed meaning, and that's the important part, meaning a, a wide variety of devices used around the globe. It's not necessarily around the globe, but it's just to give you a scale that distributed means a ton of computers that are able to send this traffic, correct? And the way that the internet works is if you want devices to talk to each other, you're gonna need somebody's IP address, bottom line, because there's no freaking way you can reach them. That's how computers communicate, it's with IP addresses. The words and stuff like google.com, yahoo.com, it's just for us as humans to understand. But computers use IP addresses, bottom line, okay? So before I get into the DDoS, I need to talk about how the proxy knows who gets what data, right? So one way is it knows everybody's IP addresses because obviously it has to, right? But on the server's end, how does the server know if I want to send it to the killer and I'm sending it to this one address, how can I guarantee that this is going to get delivered to that device? And that's the problem with proxies is that they're all coming in from one address. So the way that you differentiate addresses is by the port, right? So if the proxy is set up that the way that I've seen it be set up, you would need different ports for everybody. 
So instead of what the server sees, seeing just 0.5 and dash 69, this would be the killer's address. I would have a 0.5 address for one of those, one of the survivors, survivor one, a 0.5 address with a different port for survivor two and so on. So I'll have like 70, 71, right? So if I was to compromise the server, I would see that I have four different connections coming in, right? For all from the same address, but they're all different ports. So now if I was the, the DDoSer or the, the hacker, right? I would know this, this is the information that I have to work with. This doesn't really tell me anything. So I need to know, first of all, who is what port, okay? Because typically, there, it's not always going to be the same port, even if it's the same server, right? So I need to figure out who is the killer and who is the survivor and that way I can bomb them that quick, right? I can DDoS them. And again, I want to stress that I need this address no matter what, because the server is not going to be the one DDoSing that person, okay? All my DDoS stuff is going to come from outside of the internet. So I need this address. And if this port is open, then I can use that port to potentially bomb this particular person. Okay. Now this sounds feasible, right? The problem is, is that when we see DDoS is happening, they typically happen like in less than like 10 seconds, right? It kind of takes a while to find out who's who, because you don't really know who's who, right? And you don't have an I exact IP address for them. You just have the proxy server. So if this was set up this way, where we have one proxy server, what we would see happen is the proxy server actually slow down because of the amount of traffic that it has to process because of this DDoS that everybody would be feeling the effects of the game. Okay. So if the DDoSer was the killer, he kind of wouldn't really be getting help here. So it's for this reason and for the port reason why I don't think that this would even work in the first place if you had one proxy server. Okay. I, I just don't think it would it would be feasible. I think the proxy server would not be able to handle all the data first as opposed to being able to hand it off to somebody, okay? And on top of that, you still need to figure out whose port belongs to who. And typically, like I've said, it doesn't take that long, right? You need to find you need to figure out who like you need to figure out who this person is, okay? And you don't really get much just from having an open port. Now the other method that I think would actually work as a proxy server is uh, it's basically almost the same, except that everybody gets their own proxy server to talk to the ser to, to talk to the game server. So they just talk to their servers and the proxy servers talk to the server. Okay. And in this way, if I'm the DDoSer, I know that if I find out whose address belongs to who, right? That's a flag right there. Then I know that that particular address is going to go to that particular person. But again, the catch is I still need to figure out who is who. And in this way, this is the only way that I can see where, yes, there is no IP leak um, from the clients because you only get proxy servers but I still feel like it's a little unfeasible because you need to figure out whose is who with this proxy server. Not to mention that proxy servers aren't exactly cheap, okay? They're not very demanding, but you know, they're not like lightweight servers either, all right? And you would be setting proxy servers up every time the game boots up um, for five different people. So you would need to have this configuration down to kind of like scripted, right? To for five different people every time. And let me just bring up Steam charts real quick. For five different people, every time the game boots up, like 32,000 people. That is a lot of overhead for behavior to put out. And they're using Amazon servers. So 
the more that they use, I would imagine, the, is the more that they end up paying because that's kind of how the Amazon server is structured. So in this way, I also don't think it's feasible because while it technically this would work, um, I don't think that behavior is setting up proxy servers and with the way that they code, I don't think they're automating proxy servers for everybody. Um, secondly, I still need to figure out whose IP address would belong to who. And third, if I was to bomb this proxy server, I would be inclined to believe that the proxy server would go down first as opposed to the device going down with it as well. Because now if I'm DDoSing the proxy server, maybe the proxy server is getting congested and now I have basically a bottleneck because instead of a bunch of devices bombing me, it's just one server and typically you can handle one server load, okay? It's not like, it's not the end of the world. I think most computers are able to handle that type of network traffic. And fourth, I would need to allocate a bunch of public facing IP addresses. And you know, public addresses aren't exactly free, you know? Um, and that's th by 32,000 players average times five, I would need 160,000 IP addresses just for people to connect to my stuff. And that's not even including the IPs that I need for the server. Unless you're routing this all internally, then in which case the proxy wouldn't even have internet access and then you couldn't be able to DDoS them. And in which case the proxy theory kind of goes out the window. So now those are the two ways that I can think of a proxy would work. Now, if he means by proxy, kind of like what he implies here, right? Um, was naively forwarding data to the connected clients it could cause it. So like, let's say by proxy, okay, and this is what he means. Let's say that Steam friends and Steam chat for some reason is able to leak your IP address, right? And in this way, if I knew what what IP chat used, right? And pro or what protocol that chat used, then I could potentially send stuff through this method and that would be by proxy, correct? However, the thing is, is that you are still leaking an IP and it's not just a, like a packet leak or something. I'm DDoSing somebody. So it's gonna be a shit ton of packets getting sent to you, okay? Um, and again, he's saying naively forwarding data that's a leak, dude. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you, if technically you can use use a proxy, right? And, and, and unexpected ports, it's an IP leak, dude. Like there's <laughs> like, it doesn't matter if it's a proxy or not, right? The only way that you're correct in your post is by saying that behavior might not be lying about player IP leaks, right? Like player IP leaks are required for this. And again, I don't think that the hackers are using proxies or his behavior is using proxies for to <laughs> for, to protect their IPs, okay? And I do have proof to prove that I don't think that they're using um, proxy servers, okay? So I have, and this proof is going to be with Wireshark and it's also going to be with a clip of my friend who got DDoS. And if we're taking Redditor's, um, random redditors gospel this guy says that true uh true talent also had this and it persisted until he changed his ip the next week right and you know i would believe this guy a little more if he had maybe some more posts maybe contributed to the networking subreddits but he has like three posts on diving like scuba stuff and he only has one post here which is dvd so he has like four posts total and I'm supposed to believe that that's kind of, you know, it's kind of naive. And then aside from that, I also want to call Pixabush out because how are you going to say this to somebody? The difference does matter. For one, maybe don't accuse behavior of gaslighting or lying to their player base when you don't actually know anything about cybersecurity because it runs the risk of you looking very, very stupid if it turns out that your suppositions were wrong. And then you say 
you you start off the rant with this. But as someone more familiar with niche horror movies and Magic the Gathering than cybersecurity, I figured it'd be intellectually dishonest of me to not at least look into this idea. This comes off as extremely pretentious of you, Pixel, and it's very dishonest of you to put this out. Maybe you should have put this out as a theory, even though you say like, oh, but it's, you know, it could still be an IP leak. But then you say something like that, then it just, it's like, it's like you're being intellectually superior over somebody for knowing this information. And as your comment section shows, it shows people or people are going to think that this is what it is. Okay. Community being unreasonable. Dude, it's a fucking IP leak. All right. And it's just like, uh, man. And I also want to shout out this commenter down over here. I can't pronounce your name, but la la penguin. He basically says the same thing that I did right um the way that dbd said stuff implies that like ip leaks aren't happening when we kind of know that they are first of all and and secondly um asking a fan base to stay in their field of expertise only needs to bad results stagnation blah, blah 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 um it's people asking questions and challenging the answers given that push something out of the status quo. In fact, as he himself recognized, Pixel Bush isn't in his field by talking about network security. By your logic of players shouldn't put in technical aspects of the game if it's not their field, Pixel himself shouldn't be talking about it in the first place. So, you know, maybe think about that next time you make a video. I like your videos, Pixel, but this one just like really rubbed me the wrong way when you said something like that, okay? Um, so aside from that now, let me get into why I don't think that proxy servers are being used, okay? So the first example I'm gonna use is with Wireshark. The way that this game communicates is with UDP, right? UDP is faster than TCP, but it's not as reliable, but that's okay because that's what we're using for game servers, all right? So you can see here that this is the this is the DVD server and this is my IP address. Now this is, keep in mind, this is my, my, my private IP address uh you you can't reach these through the internet so that'd be kind of pointless if you, you know i'm that's why i'm not worried about showing uh these ip addresses right and then over here you can see the ports that it's talking to right and dbd servers uses ports somewhere around this range and like i said before the port that we use is typically random okay so the way that udp proxies work <clears throat> is that they typically either use another protocol to piggyback off or they use something called SOX5, okay? SOX5 is the way to use for UDP. It's the, it's the most simplest way to use UDP, right? So again, <clears throat> so to explain SOX5 in a, in a, in a concise way, okay? Um, SOX5 basically just means that this server is using this protocol, uh, SOX5, right? This is a proxy server. And if I'm the game server or like a client and I use UDP traffic, uh, that's a mess up B. And if I use UDP traffic, right? Most proxies don't, don't really use UDP, okay? It's only when you use, it's not only, but when you use SOC5, you can then send UDP traffic through proxies, which is also another reason why I don't think uh, behavior uses proxies in the first place, all right? So there's another one that I've mentioned called TCP, right? And when you do TCP, when you use the TCP protocol for, for your network, um, you make a connection, okay? UDP, you're just, imagine you're just like sending stuff to somebody and then they send stuff back. Okay, but if I do TCP to somebody, then I'm like in a phone call with them. Okay, and we're connected until I hang up. That's basically what what TCP would be here. In this case, it's a little more broader than that. But again, I'm just simplifying everything just to be able to explain it to you guys. So the way that that UDP is transferred over is that I use TCP first. Okay, so I connect to this server, right? with TCP and here I make the connection. So the proxy is like, oh, okay. So I know that you're this address using this port, okay? And I know I can send stuff to you, right? 
like this is your connection okay so i'm going to give you this address right here with udp okay so i'm going to give you this address right here and you use this port right here to send stuff to and i will relay that traffic for you okay so in this case now i have a udp connection i send data to there and the ip knows or the proxy knows that from this from this uh this handshake or whatever i can go it, it can go send stuff to the server okay and it knows if it receives stuff on this port and ip it sends stuff back to me and the only way that this connection stops is if i tell the proxy hey cut this connection off with tcp like i'm done and that's it it stops communicating so now again if we know that I need to make a TCP connection first to this server to be able to connect to it, then I should be able to see that in my logs. As a note, when you connect with TCP, there is typically four packets that are sent, right? And they are synchronized and acknowledge packets. And there's typically like four or more of them that you can do, right? But you'll always see this. You'll see them both together, okay? So in here, we only see acknowledge packets not anything with um not anything with synchronize okay so this means that i am not making a tcp connection to a server okay and now you might ask well wait k god if i make a connection with tcp shouldn't i get a different address to kind of communicate with the server with and in that case you are correct so now what we have to do is we have to translate these addresses and find out who or what are they because we need to rule them out okay and the first method that i've used is using ns lookup and command prompt so this is this was my most likely uh subject that i figured would be the login server not the login server but the the proxy server to log in right so I can see that it's a Valve server, so that's already knocked off, and you can you can argue that DBD uses like Valve's matchmaking and stuff, but I don't think I don't think it does. Uh, they use Amazon servers and they have their own stuff for it, so I don't think this is the case. And to further emphasize this, uh, I can filter this to just that specific that specific. Uh, address okay and i do that by filtering the port because that's what i'm using to talk to it and now uh, you can see that ever since i started this wireshark blog and as if you'll see when i'm editing this video i'll try and put the um uh the capture when i'm actually playing the game you'll see that these based on the number are already coming in beforehand so it's not like it's just signing in for the first time i've already I've already signed in here and I'm, I've been exchanging data with Steam. Whatever that is, I have no idea. So we know that that's not, that's not it, okay? So let's go further up. And now the thing is here, when I search some of these addresses, um, they give me a generic Amazon address, okay? So there's one right here, the Compute Amazon AWS. So just having this address and me knowing it's an Amazon server doesn't really deny that it could be a DNS server because compute ones you can use to or EC2s you can use um, for for proxy servers. So what I can actually do instead is I can query DNS and DNS is the protocol that tells me, hey, I'm trying to go to Google.com uh can you tell me what the address is because again we don't computers don't talk with google.com they talk with an address right and this is all happening in the background so now if i'm trying to connect to these servers right i want to my computer wants to know hey who is gamelift.apnortheast.com and then dns will respond with hey this is who this person is with the address right and you know this is like an earlier inquiry right here as you can see but i'm just use, using it as an example right so that address that we're looking for right now is 34.224.135.101 okay so let's look for that right now 
Okay, so here is that address right here. It is rtm.live.behaviordbd.com. And I don't know what RTM would mean for this server, but it should mean like real time, real time management, something like that. It, there, there's different protocols that are called RTM, um, but it, to, to <laughs> safe to say, I don't think that this is a, um, a proxy server for them, okay? Um, so that kind of already rules it out. And we can also see it's probably not a proxy server because it uses 443 and 443 is https which is typically web stuff okay this is all stuff that is happening before my connection with the udp server actually starts and again we will do one more just to kind of also help prove so we'll do this 52.205 address okay so boom, the dns query so 205.77 right there and this looks like a log server so no we are not logging in to another proxy server this is just the, the game logs i guess maybe statistics that they that the server uses to look up stuff um but again <clears throat> that's that's my proof based on wireshark okay um and i got two of these all right i got two of these fucking logs that i got just to make sure i wasn't talking out of my ass okay there's no first login that you do for the server if this was set up using proxy 5 and my second piece of evidence uh, also aligns with that true talent comment uh, being that this is a game where my friend got disconnected based off the end game chat with somebody and not only were they disconnected but they also were booted off their internet completely and <clears throat> again I would not think if there was an IP and IP leak and proxies were being used that his whole internet would go down. He would at best be disconnected from the game and he would just be able to log back in. After he walked through it, that's when I hit him with it, like from behind, pretty much. But it was it was pretty Did late and it still did talk. Him. Oh, disconnected from host. Yeah, here he left. Oh wait, no, no. You disconnected. I was I was said yeah. uh, have fun with that D pip sour puss. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that fool. Did he kick you guys out? Not just no. you. Guys? Just you. Who's just you, dude? Hello? Oh, I think he's rest, in, rest in peace. So you can see that our friend also gets disconnected. And I wish I kept the further videos, but he also leaves Discord afterwards. And he couldn't get his internet back for a few minutes. So. With all this together, I do strongly feel that there is an IP leak. So the piece that really holds this together is the fact that people seem to be getting DDoSed when they're in the game and when they're outside of it, that's typ typically they don't get DDoSed, right? So that would mean that like it's something within the game and the proxy would make sense. However, we just talked about that proxies don't, the proxy in this case would not make sense. So this could be out the window but i also want to reiterate that if this is the case this would also point to it still being the fact that it's something in dvd that is causing it it doesn't necessarily have to be a proxy but it's still something with dvd okay um and then if we are to believe my proof and true talents uh anecdotal evidence um then the fact that there are i there are attacks that happen outside of DVD, then this whole post is kind of moot because then obviously they have an IP address. And I think most people don't realize that when they get DDoSed, right, and they get kicked off and their modem, they have to restart the modem. A lot of internet providers have it configured to where you get a different IP address every time you boot up that modem, okay? Um, and the ones that don't and have one IP address are static. Okay, so it could be that these people are attributing it to just DVD being DVD when in reality their IP uh, address was leaked, but it didn't matter because once they restarted the modem, then they got a new IP address and then it was just like they were brand new. Okay, so this one, this one is kind of like the part where we kind of need a lot more evidence from.
if people are to run Wireshark like Pixel says, you would kind of have to run it most of the game, okay? And then you would have to hope that you run into somebody who's actually DDoSing. So if somebody wants to do that, uh, that would definitely clear up a lot of information here. We can get a definitive answer as to why that's happening. So do we have any kind of information on these IP leaks? And I've gathered some for you from a alleged former dev that worked on DVD and has acknowledged that the IP leaks had existed for quite a while based on his team review. They were saying in this post that it was two years ago, okay, and they posted this on 2022. So it was probably something in 2020 that made this happen, right? And they said that they still haven't fixed the IP leak vulnerability that has been the cause of people being DDoS, docs, swatted, and much more. They've known about it for two years now and refuse to fix something so simple while knowing what the root cause of it is and know what exactly to fix. So we're now going into 2023 with this vulnerability that's been in the game for over four plus years. So if we are to believe that, okay, we also have when they deny that there was IP leaks and when they when the whole this whole ruckus was brought up if you actually were on Twitter. Okay, so Dowsy here, along with our buddy Beast, that um, was the writer, was you know the alleged ex dev or whatever, also confirmed that the IP leak can be used on any platform, including Steam or including consoles and Epic Games. Again, that theory where it's something related with Steam or the Steam netcode or something like that, it's I don't think it's Steam because we would have seen this issue exacerbated with other games in steam um <clears throat> and it this only mysteriously happened in dbd so like what do you think where would you put your eggs in the basket steam having the vulnerability or something with dbd right the only things that we do know that are not causing it and this is beast twitter by the way um he denies that it has anything to do with aws and he denies that um, the IP can be scammed on the network traffic. Um, he says that's not how the vulnerability works at all. And again, if we go back to Wireshark and I open or try to open one of these packets, right? All I get is kind of a bunch of gibberish. And this is because they've actually done, you know, something that's industry standard and that's encrypt your packets. Okay. Um, you guys, your computer and the server does a handshake. And from there on, um, you get the uh, you get encrypted packets and the computer is the only one decrypting it to you know find that out if there was a way to get this to get this handshake so you can deci decipher these packets yourself then you can open the door to stuff like cheating um, in the game which might be what is happening with the cheating situation I personally do not know I don't have any theories on that because typically dedicated servers should not allow you to cheat anyway but i also have a video coming up where i do talk about I do talk about more about that um so again i think this is still happening i don't think that this is a proxy server and it's very dangerous to kind of brush this aside and help defend uh behavior with this because this is not okay in the first place like it is unheard of for dedicated servers to leak ip addresses like it should not happen because it should like it just shouldn't happen. That's all. <laughs> I, I don't even know how else to describe it. So again, technically correct, but it is not feasible. And I don't think that's how it's going to work anyway with the way that DDoS's work.